Hi and welcome back. Now, you may remember if you follow the channel for a while, I've done a base called the Strong Box. Now, as the last base I've done, this works on the principle of separating loot. Now, as everyone knows, bunkers aren't really big for me. I they're so generic, everything's in one space. And if you want to do multiple bunkers, it does actually cost quite a lot. So I want to revisit the Strong Box, try to bring it towards this meta and make it just as strong by having four individual loot rooms which have to be taken all in one piece. Now, there's various ways you can build this in terms of metal, stone and armoured. I'll take you in, let you have a look and show you. Now at the front we have Twig. This is basically... So if people are trying to do door raids, they can't really get in because they have to swim up to the door. Now they can place ladders, yes, but if you have turrets, you can place them down. Using shotgun turrets can blow out the twig, so when you're not online or if you're not at the base, it'll take the twig out. Up top, now because the helicopter is now in the game, I thought instead of you putting a roof in the top like last time, make it armoured at the top, so it costs a fortune to get into a whole load of nothing, and put the helicopter or gyrocopter at the top of it, somewhere you can safely land. Now coming in, you'll see there's a lot of doors, 26 in total I believe. This is to basically combat door raiders. So I'm trying to make it as strong as possible by separating all the loot but having a lot of space to move around. You may have double doors and just put garage doors as you go along. To be honest, if you're solo, this will be quite a grind to make, but it's possible. We used to make it solos before all the nerfs in the strong box one. Now as you can see the roof piece adds two from above. I will show in the build if it's armoured the course if you have to armour these, but I want to try and keep it practical. So if the normal person is making this, it shows exactly what it's going to cost. Now, I know a lot of people do raid counts and they do how much each base costs. We have to realise not everyone is going to build it the same in terms of materials. Some people might not have as much metal, they have to do it in stone, etc. They might have a lot of high call for a trail. So I'm trying to keep it as low as possible in terms of what it would be to raid. Now, to go through two sheet metal, everyone knows how much it costs, but I've kept the front stone. As you can see, as you pop through, if you have all the turrets in the right place, it is going to stop people from getting in. Now, the beauty of this, because of the roof piece, if someone blows through the top, they then have to take the roof piece out as well. That's why it's there. So it doubles it. So your two walls regardless. Now, if you want to do a metal or armoured, it's up to you. But as I said, I will show you what it costs in armoured if you do each room individually in armoured. Now, as I said, we're trying to separate the loot to the furthest points of the base. As you can see here, this is where the loot rooms will actually sit. This means people are going to have to work their way over four sections. If this is, if each one of them are armoured and they go from above, that's a hell of a lot of rockets just to get into the one loot room. So, working the principle where a bunker will have practically all your loot in one area, meaning they can just shoot straight through, take everything as you want, this is going to slow them down and cost them a hell of a lot more. Now, by splitting loot, it's been something that's used for quite a while, but it's kind of disappeared a little bit. So, it's something I'm going to focus on a bit more because bunkers will get patched at some point. So, we're going to have to start looking towards what we're going to do after the bunker's actually patched. Now, to do this, I will do it in sections. I'll do all the footprint first because that is key, really. I'll do this in shallow water just now, but just bear in mind, if you want the door to have the area where people have to swim up to it, you're going to have to find an area where it will sink down enough but be able to get the whole footprint in. Now, this can have a starter base if you want to have like a 2x2 two two in the middle, but it's, that's up to you if you want to do it that way. If you're in a trio, I'd probably just build this out put a TC in and break it out as you get the base fully done. As I said, there's a lot of doors in here as well, so you have to take that into account. Now, from this shape, we're just going to slowly put all the squares in, drop them down, we'll do it piece by piece because this can be quite confusing. If you struggle and want a picture of the footprint, you're more than welcome to join Discord, the link is below. Just send me a message in Discord and I will send across the footprint as a whole so you can have it as a JPEG on one monitor whilst you're actually building the base itself. Now, I'll do the sections in metal just so it shows it all separated like I did on the footprint as we started. This just makes it a lot easier for the eye to know exactly where the expansions are coming from. Now, each loot room, as I said, you can probably get away with having one or two loot rooms to start with and just keep building your way through. If I probably work from the left loot room all the way around, 
because that way you can get 2x2 two two and just section it out. You're going to want to try and get this built quite quick because you may have sections open, so bear that in mind as well. Now the armour cost is going to be very minimal because we're only really going to do the loot rooms if we do any and the floors on the top. The reason why I've done the floors on the top is so if someone does take the centrepiece, they're spending 16 rockets to get sections of the base, but they still have a lot of doors to go through to actually get to the loot rooms themselves. Now these sections I'm putting in are going to be the roof pieces, you may not want them, but it strengthens the base up so people can't just go in through one of the sides. You may just want to put walls in if you don't want to do the roof trick that i done with the furnaces inside, but I'll show you how they're done anyway because it utilises the space. And again, if they get into it, they're not really going to get very far because they still have to go through opposite sides. So they're still going to spend quite a lot to actually progress. Now to get the roof piece in, you're going to have to put two half walls in, in twig. I've got B-grade on, so that's why they're going to sheet metal now. Take the lower one away, then you're going to put the roof piece in, which I'll come back to. So we'll just put all these in. If you notice I am in B-grade, you obviously won't be able to do it as I'm doing it now. Unless you're a modded server, of course. Every loot room is exactly the same. So, once you master one, you've got them all. Put your roof piece in, and that will give you your two walls. Now, this does restrict the space, how many boxes you can put in. However, remember, just separating all your loot. The whole point of this base is to basically make people work and spend a hell of a lot more than what they normally would to take all your loot. That's what it's there for. It's not to sit in camp with your little sniper rifle and kill people. There's no point. We'll do this in armoured and I will do all of them in armoured. I'll go back and do the floors as well and show you how much each loot room would be if it was fully armoured. I think it's around 96 in your TC per day, which is quite a lot. However, if you're in a trio, it's not actually that much, to be honest. And some bunkers that you get just now can cost quite a lot. So considering you're going to have to go through this quite a bit in all four sections, People are going to spend a hell of a lot. If you get armoured doors as well, this becomes a mini fortress. So as I said, each of the room is exactly the same. Just bear in mind that half wall and twig, don't upgrade it because you're going to have to sit and pick it out. If you do it metal, you're going to be sitting there reading your own base. Put them in place, drop your pieces in. I would try and do this systematically where the roofs are all in place as in the tiles above so you can do it safely. However, for this, I'm just going to keep it as open as possible so you can actually see how it's done in real time. Now, as I said before, you can use these roof pieces for the furnaces if you wish. However, some people might not want to do that. I personally like using this because I like to utilise the space. Yes, it leaves a gap, but if you do have armoured doors, all they're going to do is basically take an armoured door after this. They still have to get rid of the sheet metal in front. You can do it by spread, however, from the raiders I've seen recently, I wouldn't worry too much. Now, I'll only do the furnaces in this one, just for example, but that's basically how it works. I do it on a lot of bases, it's just using the honeycomb, so you're not just having dead space. I said a lot of people won't like it because the gap, people can shoot through, that's fine. You can put a garage door there instead, doesn't make too much of a difference. Or if you do have armoured doors, put an armoured door there. If you're getting raided, you can always put a turret behind it and open the door and it'll take them out as well. Now, as I said, every loot room is exactly the same. So as soon as you've done one and mastered it, it's, it's quite easy to do. The old strong box was a lot stronger because you could basically pack walls inside foundations as well. But unfortunately we can't do it anymore, so we're stuck with this one instead. I know it's, people will say it's only two walls per loot room, but... If you go through every single one, and if you armour these as well, you have to think that's quite a lot to spend. And if you're like me, when you're playing Rust, I like to use everything I've got before I go off. I'll happily farm the next day and get everything back. Because offline raiding is something that happens still all the time, and it's going to happen for the foreseeable future, so you have to get used to it. There's nothing you can do about it, it's just the way Rust is. If you don't do it already, I highly recommend that you don't leave mass amounts of stuff inside your bases. Just use it. Go out raid. Don't be scared to online raid. It's part of the game. One thing I've noticed from playing recently is people have gear fear and do not want to actually go out and raid. I don't know why. It's. I would rather play Rust and fail an online raid and have fun doing it than sit an offline raid and just go through someone's doors just get more stuff to sit in the base and look at it in boxes 
but some people play it different from others to get that but just try it it's honestly it's a mo lot more satisfying and it can be a lot more fun as well and the amount of respect you can get from doing it is actually quite big now as i said i won't put pharmacies in i'll just show how it's done you can place these in if you wish as i said it's completely up to you now I would recommend having garage doors. I know it's a hell of a lot of gears for a base this size, but it's, honestly, they're a lot stronger. If you do get armored doors, just remember that's going to have a cost on your TC as well. So you can see now the full base is practically in place. The inside, I will show you how I done the inside because you want to force them down a certain route to make sure they can't just go straight into loot rooms. Now, wall placement is key for this. Again, you want to try and maximise have as many doors as possible so people can't take shortcuts. You can put certain armoured walls in places. I would recommend also putting the stone that you can see for the foundations in here to metal if you can. I've kept it stone just now just so you can see exactly where the separation is. Now in this area, I said the first wall goes here, then you're going to build around because you want them to work all the way around regardless. The route we're doing the walls just now means they have to at some point change the full route and start hitting doors now the reason for this is people are going to hear that if you're on a busy server and not in one of those little dead ones that people tend to play for no reason people are going to hear and counter raid counter raiders as i said before a lot of time will just probably take the stuff and run away and use the actual stuff for a raid they wanted to do or depending on how deep they are into the base and the raid and they feel they've got enough they'll keep going so the more noise they make, the more chance they're going to get caught out. And this basically amplifies that massively. Now, taking all the way through, I'm just going to put these door frames in place. You can use normal doors, it's up to you. But garage doors beat sheet doors every day of the week. And everyone always has excess stuff, excess stuff towards the end. So just utilise it and make use of it. There's no point in not, because it's just going to sit in a box. If people are destroying it, it means you can't get it. So it's worthwhile actually using it. Now you see this opening space here. This was the armoured floor section. Now armoured floor because it is quite open. The strong box one didn't have it because armoured wasn't really used back in that time. Um, I think it's only in recently, like the last six months, I've honestly started using armoured walls and foundations. Never done it. Never seen the need to do it. However, the current meta, you need to do it. So keeping that armour cost as well for upkeep is critical. You don't want to be spending too much because that means it's stopping you from actually playing the game because you need high quality to actually spend to get decent stuff like rocket launchers, etc. And if you're on a busy server, you don't want to be wasting farm time just to keep a base going. So be very wary of how you do it. And I think that's why separation of loot becomes quite handy. Now, a small base... For a solo player who just wants a tiny little base just to keep them safe, a bunker wins hands down. But if you want a bigger base, which is going to cost just as much, this is when separation of loot comes in handy. The reason I don't like bunkers is mainly because it, it can be annoying. People can still get into them by using fire arrows, etc. They can be very glitchy. Some bunker bases actually glitch if servers restart and it recalculates the actual stability, which can cause you issues as well. So you have to bear that in mind. I've had a lot of people tell me that they've had issues with certain bunker bases where it will not actually allow them to get the flow tile away again. It's just part and parcel. Rush changes all the time, the code changes all the time, and it can cut you in the long run. So that is a base complete. I won't put doors. I'm not going to place TC or workbenches anywhere because it's really up to you where you want to put that. As I said, TC will go in one of the loot rooms, you can get two large boxes if you do it properly. But you can see now we're very low in high call there. Very, very low indeed. We've only done one loot room. I will do the rest of the loot rooms now and the foundations for it. Just to give you an example of how much it's actually going to cost to do it. Because some people will want to do these loot rooms in armoured, which adds a massive amount of rockets or C4 to each loot room, especially if you've got armoured doors. Now, having armoured doors, I know a lot of people say they find it difficult, especially if they are solo. I personally find it difficult as well. They can be quite hard to find. But if you do get them, they're worthwhile using. And now, bear in mind, again, it will add to your upkeep. So you have to 
consider that as well. So we'll do the foundations as well. That takes each one of these to basically 16 after they've gone through the sheet metal above it as well, which is a hell of a lot if you think about it per loot room. So even just having two armoured doors before the actual loot room, you're double stacking an armoured every single time. The cost of this, how I built it now, I'll be on the screen, you can see as a decent amount, however, for what you get back from it, I honestly think it is extremely beneficial from what you're actually putting into it. So again, I'm going to put in our poll on YouTube to see in the community tab what base you want to do next. I really want to do a large furnace base, but I'll let you guys pick. I go la 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 la.